Hello, art fiends and doodle dabblers alike. I'm Chrissy Lulu, and if this is your first time on my channel, welcome. If you're coming back, it's nice to have you back. Uh, so this video is my attempt at the 100 Portraits in 10 Days Challenge. It's called the 100 Head Challenge, if you've heard of it before. And this was a challenge made by Ahmed Aldori on YouTube. And in this challenge, he draws 100 heads in just 10 days, which means 10 heads a day. Uh, so I unfortunately had a bit of a late start on this. So I did this challenge at the beginning of this month, and I started on the second day. So I was already kind of behind, and then on top of that, it was very hard at first to actually finish all the 10 heads each day. Um, on top of that, I also had to find all my references. I tried to get those out of the way as soon as possible, uh, just so I didn't have to go looking them up. I'd have them all on hand, so I can just click on a reference, look at it, and then go. Uh, and that really worked in my favor in the end. Um, just because I wasn't wasting time thinking about, oh, which uh, reference is a good reference to draw for today, for right now. I could just have a list going, and I could be like, I'm doing these heads on this day. And it kept me very organized. Um, it was really kind of a very therapeutic challenge in a way. Um, it's kind of just the same thing every day, so it's a very repetitive challenge. But it's to help train your eye to drawing faces, drawing what you see, um, in other words, um, which isn't a very important skill to have. So I really actually enjoyed this challenge. Um, and I found from day one to day 10, I did get actually faster. Um, I ended up on day 10 completing 20 heads in one day because I was a little behind. Um, of course, I cut up to where I was, I would have been if I had done it all in those 10 days. Um, I was doing this as a challenge for the Art Amino, which they were hosting this challenge this month. They host a chart challenge every month, and this is my first time participating in one. And I did get um, the flair for this challenge, so that was pretty cool. Um, but yeah, I really enjoyed doing this challenge. I tried to get a very wide array of faces and um, expressions and just figures as possible. I really wanted to have a lot of diversity in the subjects that I was looking at just so I'm not drawing the same thing every day and it's not getting too repetitive and I'm actually learning something. Um, if you're suffering from same face syndrome, which a lot of people who draw cartoons and such are, um, this is a really great challenge to try and help you kind of learn how other faces look. Um, it gets you out of your comfort zone and makes you look at faces that you might not be as comfortable drawing. For example, someone with a large nose, someone with large eyebrows, someone with big lips, someone with small lips, someone with a small nose, someone with small eyes, someone with single eyelids. It just really helps you kind of get that kind of muscle memory working and you start to develop it. Um, and in a challenge like this, it's the perfect time to do it because well, you're kind of forced into starting that. Um, and it kind of pushes you into starting the habit and getting that muscle memory going rather than perhaps being like you're going to put it off you know putting it off to another day oh I will try another face another day or maybe not even thinking about what kind of faces you're drawing and just kind of going with the flow and doing the same thing every time um, this really helps you build kind of a library in your head to pull from and helps you really diversify your skills in drawing. Um, so if you are suffering from same face syndrome, I would actually very much recommend doing this challenge as it'll help you. I recommend getting a lot of different faces. Um, in my challenge, I decided 
I wanted a lot of each gender. I wanted young people. I wanted old people. I wanted black people. I wanted Asian people. I wanted a very full spectrum. But if you really want to get good at like a specific type of face that you're uncomfortable with, this would be a good challenge to kind of modify it and kind of go that way. For example, if you kind of want to go out of your comfort zone and learn kind of the basic traits of like a male face, if you're not comfortable drawing males and you want to draw more males and you feel like you're just kind of defaulting on drawing female characters all the time, if you take this challenge and then specifically draw a wide range of just male heads that will help you immensely um, and I did this as a realism challenge but you don't have to if you want to do this as kind of a cartoony challenge go right ahead um, I personally would strongly recommend using references because you're learning from real life and that is honestly the best way to actually learn how to draw is by looking at what's real just because that's typically what you're drawing and simplifying when you're doing cartooning and anime art and all that kind of ab like not realism work is you're taking real life and you're simplifying it so looking at the source material can help quite a lot um, another thing that you could do to in this challenge when you're going about it is work on expressions. Um, this is something I also wanted to focus on a lot. I kind of had a very wide spectrum, so I kind of have a basic knowledge in a lot, but I'm not a master per se in any of the stuff I drew. But if I really wanted to get better at, say, angry faces and being able to draw an angry face just from memory and get a lot of emotion in that, um, I could get a lot of references, take this challenge and fix it to my liking and then just draw people being angry. Um, just a lot of people and then that builds that muscle memory, especially if you're doing a hundred heads in 10 days. That's a very quick challenge and that's a lot of drawing, um, which is really good um, for building that memory. Um, it's a lot better than say drawing a hundred heads in like two months and having that spread out um, because you're doing it all and from one day to the next you're keeping what you learned the day before um, and once you've kind of drawn enough let's say the exam go with the example I was going with angry people you'll be able to start and being like okay this is what someone looks like when they're angry and be able to kind of more naturally I'll say um, kind of draw emotions to your characters so you don't just have characters with blank expressions all the time once you also look at emotions from real life you can start to take these emotions and push them which is something that you do want to do in let's say like cartoon art and anime art you really want to push the idea home that this person is feeling this so um, instead of doing what it would look like in real life you really want to push it to the extreme to make it very clear what this is fe this person is feeling and it's very exaggerated that's something that's very important in cartooning and anime is the exaggeration of real life for example cartoons have larger heads than humans is an exaggeration on real life or people in anime have nicer body figures or more extreme body figures you see this in comics too where like females will have like extreme hourglass shapes men will have very manly physiques and this is kind of going with the exaggeration where you're trying to push this idea home um, with the simplified material that you're working with and that's really honestly a good thing to do with your emotions because that will make the art you're drawing more interesting to the viewer uh, because you have a very clear representation of an emotion there it's not oh are they feeling sad or are they feeling mad um, there's no confusion if you kind of push it to the extreme 
Um, you can also kind of tweak this challenge, I feel, in a way that you start with very real stuff. And then as the days go on, you kind of more and more bring in your own style and start working in your own work and your own ideas and start working from your head and this um, bank, this memory bank, memory library, whatever you want to call it, that you're starting to build. And you're starting to really enforce what you're learning just from this challenge, just in this little 10-day period or however long you want. Um, honestly, drawing every day is an amazing habit to get into. Um, I would love to say I draw every day, but I do not. I applaud anyone who does, um, honestly. Um, I really wish I did draw every day. I just am a lazy butthole and I don't. <laughs> but yeah, um, I hope that you enjoyed watching me draw a hundred heads. These were all made in ten days. Um, I had a lot of fun. I don't think they are all amazing. And if you do decide to do this challenge, number one, I do want to see it. And two, just remember that your heads don't have to be perfect. Um, remember, it's okay to have a bad head, especially when you're drawing so many. Perfection is not the goal in a challenge like this. Instead, the goal of a challenge like this is to really just get the muscle memory going. Um, once you've kind of got yourself kind of warmed up to the faces and you've got this memory bank going and you know what you're doing, you should just naturally improve, which is kind of what I found happened um, when I did this challenge. Um, it was very hard at first to draw the faces and a lot of them weren't turning out amazing. And then by the end of the challenge, I was going a lot faster and I felt they were turning out much better with less work if that makes sense i didn't have to kind of force it to look good as much as i did at the beginning so just remember if you do do a challenge do not give up um just keep pushing through it even if you think stuff is bad um i do this when i do challenges such as inktober or my dog days of summer which i did again this summer um, or Mermaid, which I did last year. You just got to keep pushing through. You can't stop halfway through. Um, but yeah, I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you feel inspired in some sort of way to draw. I hope I've inspired myself to draw a little bit too. <laughs> and yeah, I hope to see you guys in the next video. So bye-bye, guys.